Okay. Botswana has uh, one of the most mature economies in Africa. It has the highest per capita income in, in, in Africa in the whole mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. uh, it has an incredible amount of resources. Uh, diamond, the largest diamond mines in the world is in Botswana. Coal, nickel, mm -hmm. uh, uranium, all those wonderful natural resources is in uh, Botswana. Good evening and welcome to Captions. I'm Andre Bohannon, your host, and again, I want to thank you for choosing Captions. And having had made that choice, I'm going to see to it that you find this show as interesting as hopefully you found the past ones. We're going to be talking about a very interesting topic tonight. We're going to be talking about business. As you can see, I have two gentlemen sitting immediately to my left. There's a person probably most of you will recognize because he's been around in the community, Larry Ivory, and sitting to his left, we have the mayor, Norman Durflinker. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. A pleasure, Andre. Gentlemen, I understand that both of you have been on trips, not only in terms of just the topic of business, but expanding business opportunities. Uh, Larry, I understand that uh, you've been on a trip both to China, along with Norman, as well as to Africa expanding and opening up new markets hopefully as well as i know your major focus is to see to it that some markets can open up right here in peoria and particularly as it relates to black businesses indeed well gentlemen again i uh, want to thank you for taking the time tonight to talk about some of the challenges that businesses in general may have as well as particularly in terms of expanding our markets and, and business opportunity. Larry, uh, I think most people recognize you who have been here for a while in Peoria, recognize you as being the president and CEO of our local Peoria Chamber of Com Com Black Chamber of Commerce, excuse me, as well as you also uh, are associated with our National Black Chamber of Commerce. And from what I understand there's probably some close to some 200 chapters now across our nation am i correct that's correct andre what is the the primary focus of the the black chamber of commerce what is it that uh, what is your mission in terms of uh, organization well you know our mission says to economically empower and sustain the african-american community mm -hmm. to entrepreneurship and capitalistic activities via interaction with our national and the black diaspora but the simple word for it is that our job is to help create opportunities for African-American business owners to grow and build capacity and participate in the American economy. Well, that is fantastic. And I would assume that probably today that challenge is as great as it's ever been. In fact, with little I know, probably we have less black businesses today than we did many, many years ago when segregation was the thing rather than integration because back in the day we had banks, newspapers, radio shows. We basically mirrored white society simply because we couldn't be a part of white society. Am I correct with that? Uh, that's correct, Andre. And uh, I would assume that the challenges in starting businesses and keeping businesses going is, is quite a challenge and organizations like yours are there to direct and assist and support businesses? Oh yeah, that's the reason that we exist, mm -hmm. is to make sure that uh, we do everything within our power to create an opportunity for business owners mm -hmm. to have access to opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that we recognize is that there's no discrimination when it comes to collecting taxes. Right. <laughs> uh, when it comes to getting contracts, we find that all of a sudden this convenient uh, ability to forget uh, how the dollars were raised in order to create the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So our challenge is to make sure whether it be government agencies or corporations where we spend our money, mm -hmm. that there's adequate uh, opportunity for people of color to do mm -hmm. business with them. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a significant challenge. If you take a look at the unemployment numbers throughout the United States, 
uh, we have a nine and a half percent unemployment. In the African American communi community, it's more like 28 percent. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, we got some significant challenges. And if you're going to participate and create a better community, you got to do that to business and opportunity and creating wealth. No, that part is true because I, I know I kind of smile when they talk about the high unemployment rate is being 9% and moving 10. I wish ours was <laughs> that yeah. good in terms yeah. of 9 or 10%. As I jokingly tell people, we haven't had full employment as black folks since slavery days, <laughs> of which unfortunately a lot of us supposedly were working then for meaningless wages if we received anything at all. I, uh, I know that one of the challenges that you and many of our organizations have often kept the feet of the fire of our government agencies in terms of seeing to it that opportunities are given to minority businesses as, as far as the, the public sector. And in fact, you just talked about that. But I would assume that most of the businesses are in the private sector. And I would hopefully encourage that after tonight's show, there are individuals that will be thinking about going into business that doesn't require a 10% set aside necessarily in terms of a government, but being 100% available for the total community, both black and white, because the most important color as far as business is concerned is green. green. It's not black, it's not white, it's not yellow, but it, it, it's green. And um, what, what, in your opinion, is the state of our black businesses right here in, in Peoria? Is there an increase in our our number of black businesses, have there been a decrease or things about stable as far as you can see and feel? Well, if you really take a look at the true numbers mm -hmm. uh, and based upon the demographics and all things mm -hmm. being considered, is that there is a real lack of business growth and <coughs> development mm -hmm. for African-American business owners. Okay. Uh, when you talk about capacity in mm -hmm. terms of construction, in terms of services, uh, the numbers are pretty dismal, mm -hmm. to be quite frank. Uh, our challenge is how do we grow capacity? Mm -hmm. I mean, how do we get, uh, how do we grow capacity? There's only a couple ways to do it when you take a look at it. Mm -hmm. You can grow it organically, which means that you grow it, you know, yourself here, or, or one, you could buy it. If you got enough money and resources, you can go out mm -hmm. and buy capacity by acquiring another company who already mm -hmm. has capacity. Or number three, you can um, partner or you can bring qualified business owners from someplace else and help them to locate in Peoria. And we've done that. You know, mm -hmm. We have a company like Infrastructure Engineering, mm -hmm. who one of the largest black engineering firms in the state of Illinois, who's opened an office in Peoria. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the help of the chamber, he's able to get contracts and he's able to, to come to Peoria and do business in Peoria. Mm -hmm. And so we, we got some real challenges, in my opinion. Uh, but I think we have to be far more focused on business growth and development mm -hmm. as a group of people mm -hmm. than ever before because we live in a global world, a global economy, and we have to not only look what we can do here locally, but how do we expand our markets into Africa, mm -hmm. into China, mm -hmm. and really begin to understand mm -hmm. that there's a place for black businesses everywhere in the world. That's right, that's true. In fact, Norman, wasn't that part of the focus of your trip? Uh, as, the, as far as expanding markets and opening up relationships? The, that was absolutely it. Um, we have a, uh, a new company coming to Morton called Yin Lun. Mm -hmm. uh, their corporate offices are in Tiantai, China. Okay. Uh, through our discussions, finding them a place to, to have their business, uh, our Economic Development Council asked, would we be interested in maybe having a sister city relationship mm -hmm. with Tiantai? Mm -hmm. And uh, and the village board and I said absolutely, you know. And so we then started the process of a sister city, for three reasons really. Um, of course, business was one. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one was uh, the cultural aspects. Uh, we have a large number of families who are adopting Chinese children, mm -hmm. and we thought that it was important that that we develop that cultural aspect. And then finally, the education. In some respects, we have a lot to learn from the, from the Chinese. Mm -hmm. I think they have more to learn from us, but mm -hmm. they, we have a lot to learn from them. So uh, what occurred was the mayor of Tiantai asked our governor, because he heard there was going to be a trade mission coming, if I could come and we could do the sister city signing there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, through that process uh, I, in Tiantai, I was introduced to many business entrepreneurs, owners that uh, 
uh, are looking at, at the United States, and we tried to get them to look at the Puri area and, and Morton. Mm -hmm. um, we, would, we, would like to, uh, we would like to see them come here mm -hmm. and develop some jobs here. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely are losing jobs to China. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's great. And uh, Larry, one of the places that uh, you visited is another place that has lots and lots of people and opportunities for expanding market was, was Africa. What, what did you find uh, over in Africa as, as an ambassador in a sense of going there to see as well as to sell America as well as to open up opportunities there for Americans? Well, you know, it's always exciting to, uh, from my opinion, to go back home. Okay. Uh, Africa is where most African Americans come from. Mm -hmm. And when you go over to Africa, you take a look. We happen to spend most of our time in South Africa. South Africa. Uh, even though we, we've, we've done trade missions in West Africa, we were in Botswana. Okay. Botswana has uh, one of the most mature economies in Africa. It has the highest per capita income in, in, in Africa in the whole mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. uh, it has an incredible amount of resources, uh, diamond, the largest diamond mines in the world is in Botswana, coal, nickel, mm -hmm. uh, uranium, all those wonderful natural resources is in uh, Botswana. Mm -hmm. And what you find that those markets are very open, very friendly. Uh, when we spend our time in China, China is a great place. The G there, uh, the GDP is growing at 10%, which is phenomenal. Right. Uh, but their markets aren't as open, in my opinion, as our markets are to them. But in Botswana, those markets are completely open. Mm -hmm. They're looking for people to come in, make investments, and to, uh, to find opportunities. And I'll give you one quick example. Uh, Botswana has 3 million cattle and some of the best mm -hmm. beef in the world. Mm -hmm. And they got 2 million people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And but they have no leather industry at all. Okay. Okay. So they have the cattle. They they kill the cattle for the meat, mm -hmm. but they're not doing anything with the leather at all. Uh, they have seventy seven hundred seventy seven thousand ostriches, wild ostriches, and in Africa, mm -hmm. and they kill the ostriches for the food, but they don't do anything with the skin. Mm -hmm. So there's tremendous opportunity. The infrastructure is phenomenal. Uh, diamonds represent a significant port. Caterpillar has a big presence. Uh, Barlow World, I think, is a company that's mm -hmm. the dealership in Africa. We went to the biggest diamond mine in the world, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just absolutely incredible of what's happening in Botswana. So, uh, you know, we believe that we got to think globally. We got to take a look at where we may have a competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. And I think in Africa, you have a greater chance of lack of competition, bigger profit margins, and people who are really looking for you to do business with them. Well, that is fantastic. That is fantastic. One, if I may add also, um, I found out in China that the Chinese are investing heavily into Africa only because of the resources that Africa has, because they, they know that that's going to be very important down the road, and the Chinese do look a long ways down the road. Mm -hmm. And so the sooner we can get there and 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 get inside the door, the better off we're going to be because the Chinese are already there. Sure. And, and I just mentioned this, uh, Andre, is that the Chinese has always been proactive in their thinking. They do a lot of long-term strategic planning. Mm -hmm. When you talk about fueling their economy, the energy needs, mm -hmm. because they import a lot of uh, mm -hmm. energy from outside their country, you know, they're looking at as they continue to grow their economy and people continue to have kids, and mm -hmm. you can only have one kid in China mm -hmm. per family now. Uh, they're strategically looking at where the resources are. Mm -hmm. And so they're getting and they're making investments in infrastructure and minerals and everything else because they're seeing what the future looks like, you know, in the future. Right. And, and we got to be much smarter. Uh, in some places around the country, we pull back our investments in Africa mm -hmm. while the Chinese are making more investments in Africa. Mm -hmm.